Second question. Yeah, I think you know what to get That's it. That's true. Alright, so the kind of the Trump wants not only to do a redo of the Iowa caucuses, but thinks that your results should be nullified. <laughs> well, listen, it, it is no surprise uh, that Donald is throwing yet another temper mic? tantrum, or if you like, yet another Trumper tantrum. Uh, it seems his reaction to everything is to throw a fit, to engage in insults, and I understand that Donald finds it very hard to lose, that, that, that he finds that very difficult for him. But at the end of the day, the Iowa people spoke. Donald Trump guaranteed a victory in Iowa. And then he lost. And he doesn't like that. And his reaction is that he breaks down. He really has problems. You know, he accused the people of Iowa of being stupid. In fact, he skipped the Iowa debate. It makes you wonder if his next step is to accuse the people of New Hampshire of being stupid, if he plans to skip the New Hampshire debate, and after that, if he plans to, to accuse the people of South Carolina of being stupid and skip the South Carolina debate. Listen, this is a job here. Anyone who wants this job interview needs to come and answer the questions of the men and women of Iowa, of New Hampshire, of South Carolina. I'm here campaigning on the ground, answering the questions of the men and women here, because that's the respect you owe the people on the ground. And there's a reason that Donald engages in insult after insult. 
because he can't debate the substance. He doesn't actually want to talk about issues. Donald does not want to defend his lifelong support for socialized medicine, for Bernie Sanders-style socialized medicine. Donald wants to expand Obamacare so that the federal government is in charge of your health care and my health care, is in charge of your doctor and my doctor. Now, he's entitled to that view. It's a view that would be very welcome in the Democratic Party. It's a view that both Hillary and Bernie Sanders support. But it is exactly the opposite of my view. My view is, if I'm elected president, we're going to repeal every word of Obamacare. Donald doesn't want to discuss that issue. He doesn't want to discuss his support for eminent domain for taking private property and giving it to giant corporations and casinos. So instead he get, engages in insults. I think the people are interested in substance and record and a positive optimistic vision. Sarah, this vision. line of attack, though, he is calling you a cheater. He's calling <laughs> you a fraud. Does this cross the line for you? Oh, listen, it, Donald's insults get more and more hysterical the more and more upset he gets. And that's fine. He can do that. I'm not going to respond in kind. Do you think they're funny? I'm going to I think they're. I think they're very funny. I think Donald, I wake up every day and laugh at the latest thing Donald has tweeted. Because he's losing it. Look, we need a commander-in-chief, not a Twitterer-in-chief. We need someone with judgment and the temperament to keep this country safe. I don't know anyone who would be comfortable with someone who behaves this way having his finger on the button. I mean, we're liable to wake up one morning and Donald, if he were president, would have nuked Denmark. That's not the temperament of a leader to keep this country safe. We need a president who will have the back of our fighting men and women, who will have their back and will be clear-eyed and focused on our enemies, on radical Islamic terrorists, and on defeating ISIS. That's what I will do every day. And the American people are not interested in this circus sideshow of insults. You know, my girls are five and seven. And I gotta tell you, Caroline and Catherine are better behaved than a presidential candidate who responds by insulting everyone every day when you condemned what your campaign did to Dr. Ben Carson just before the Iowa caucus. Will you fire or suspend anyone in your campaign for putting out misinformation? Well, what you said is not accurate. I didn't condemn anyone. Uh, listen, Ben Carson is, is a terrific man. He's a man of principle. He's a man of character. Ben and Candy have become good friends, and I really like and respect him. Our political team passed on a CNN news story that CNN broke. The news story said that Ben Carson was not continuing from Iowa on to New Hampshire. He was not continuing to South Carolina. Instead, he was going home to Florida. That was a news story CNN had, had posted. And our political team passed it on to our supporters. It was breaking news that was relevant. Now, subsequently, the Carson campaign put out another statement saying that he was not, in fact, suspending his campaign. And I apologize to Ben for our team not passing on their subsequent clarification. But this is not a campaign that scapegoat goats our staffers, that, that holds someone out and, and fires them for political purpose. So no, we're not going to scapegoat anybody. And I would note that the news story that, that our team passed on was true and accurate. CNN reported it, and in fact, Ben did go to Florida instead of New Hampshire or South Carolina. And, and so... You got is, it, is it a dirty last, trick to confuse question. voters? Is it a dirty trick to pass on your news stories? You're in the business. Would, would you think it was a dirty trick if I was forwarding an ABC story? Senator, yeah, was there anything? Line, or is it just a dirty trick to pass on CNN But stories? you didn't clarify, so the voters could have been confused. <laughs> Look, passing on a true and accurate news story it is, in fact, something that, that voters found relevant. And, and I would not listen, there is a reason why the media is chattering about this. Because the media wants to stir up a fight between Ben Carson and me. I love Ben. I'm not interested in criticizing him. I will praise Ben. I will praise his character. That's the only place I'm going. And there's a reason Donald Trump wants to focus on that. Because he wants a circuit sideshow and he knows all the folks in the media will happily oblige. How about talking about the substantive issues? You want to talk about something substantive? Let's talk about amnesty. Let's talk about the fact that Donald Trump supports amnesty. Now, some people are surprised at that because they say, gosh, Donald uses really harsh rhetoric on immigration, so he must oppose amnesty. Well, if you listen to what Donald has actually proposed on the, on the presidential trail, he has said we should deport people here illegally, but then let them come back to this country immediately as U.S. citizens. i got to say, I disagree with that. That's called touchback. It's actually an idea establishment Republicans have pushed for a long time. 
and it simply involves flying people here illegally back home, letting them touch the ground for a second, and then they come back as citizens. I'm the only one in this race who has consistently opposed amnesty, consistently opposed citizenship, and I'll tell you, letting 12 million people here illegally become U.S. citizens, which is the position of Donald Trump, it's the position of Marco Rubio, and it's the position of Hillary Clinton, that's going to do nothing for the hard-working men and women in New Hampshire who are losing their jobs because of illegal immigration, who are seeing their incomes driven down and their wages driven down because of illegal immigration. And as president, I will secure the borders and keep this country safe. Senator, how does Senator say Paul... Say final things. Number one, I think the people of New Hampshire are eagerly awaiting the news whether Donald will join us for the debate here in New Hampshire. He skipped the Iowa debate and he lost. And... You know, he was apparently afraid of Megyn Kelly, and I get that Megyn is a very frightening person. And, and Donald is apparently a fragile soul, where getting difficult questions from Megyn Kelly really would, would have dismayed him. But I think you owe the voters the respect of standing in front of them, so I'm waiting to see whether or not Donald will show up in the New Hampshire debate. And when, when he skipped the Iowa debate, I invited Donald Trump to participate in a one-on-one -on -one debate. And he declined. He was afraid to do a one-on-one -on -one debate. And he put out a statement. He said, well, once Ted is the clear second place finisher, then I'll debate him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Donald, the people of Iowa have done you one better. Now Donald is the clear second place finisher. We won Iowa. He took second. But I will accept his offer on the terms he offered. Now that he's the clear second place finisher, let's do a one-on-one -on -one debate. You and me, Donald, you can stand there and insult me all day long. And I'll talk about issues and substance. And as I mentioned before, if he's afraid of having Megyn Kelly moderate, then we can have Mark Levin moderate, or we can have Sean Hannity moderate, or we can have Rush Limbaugh moderate, or if all of those are too frightening, then we can just have the men and women in New Hampshire. Let's do a town hall. Get a couple of hundred men and women from New Hampshire and let them ask us questions. And I would invite Donald to do it any day between now and the New Hampshire primary. Under the terms he said, he ought to accept that. But my prediction right now is he's not going to accept that because what Donald does when he loses is he blames everybody else. It's never Donald's fault. It's always somebody else's fault and it's always an insult. And I think people are tired of that. They're ready for a leader who takes responsibility, who knows what he believes, and who has the courage to stand with the American people. Senator, how does Senator Paul's withdrawal affect the race? Senator, Senator DePaul, how does that affect the race? Down front. Down front. Down front. Well, what are you going to do here? First of all, any comment on Rand Paul, and how do you try to pick up some of those supporters that you're campaigning for? Well, listen, Rand Paul is a friend. He and I have worked very closely together. Rand came and campaigned for me when I ran for Senate. He campaigned across the state of Texas supporting me. And he and I have been side by side on a great many fights in the U.S. Senate standing for liberty. Um, I wish Rand and Kelly well. They worked very, very hard. They ran a hard campaign. I, I wish them well. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm very encouraged by the Liberty Movement supporters who've come behind our campaign, particularly here in the Granite State. We have an incredible con in this race who was supporting Rand Paul or who was supporting other candidates who have, who have dropped out of the race. I would say we would welcome you as part of our team. This is a time for unity. What astonished the pundits in Iowa was the unity of the voters there, that we saw that Reagan coalition coming together. And listen, if anyone's going to win the nomination, You've got to be able to bring together a broad coalition across ideological and philosophical lanes. It's why it's so encouraged to see to see conservatives and evangelicals and libertarians and Reagan Democrats all coming together. That's our coalition. That's what it takes to win the nomination. That's what it takes to win the general and beat Hillary Clinton. And, and I have been so encouraged by the Liberty Movement folks coming to us, and I hope we see a great many more of Rand supporters. They will find a home, and we will welcome them with open arms. And every one of those supporters can know that I have spent my entire adult life fighting to defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and that's exactly what I will do as President of the United States. Senator Paul, you Thanks, Senator. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>